name, oh God, we thank you. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We ask, Lord God, that you would just God, and fill me, oh God, that I will say all that you would have me to say. So it is in the name of Jesus, I give you praise, I give you glory, and I say amen. Tonight, bless God, we are on day eight, and this is January the 9th, and we're coming from 1 Corinthians, <clears throat> the second chapter and the fifth verse, and I'm reading from the Full Life Translation, and it gives us in reading, starting at verse five, it's just one verse. I may read another one, but I'll be ever so that your faith might, might not rest on man's wisdom, but on God's power. Uh, and our lesson, it says, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom. And I can't pronounce that word, the rhetoric. How do you say that? Over here. Rhetoric rhetoric of men, but on the power of God. Um, in, in looking at the def definition of that word, uh, it means the art of using words effectively, uh, but having little or no meaning. It's impressive trying to impress men of their wisdom, not of the power of God. And so when we understand that faith, praise God, is based on what God says and what his word says, and we are thankful that he, when Paul came to him, to the people, he said, I didn't come with enticing words, but I came in the power of the Lord. We rest in him. We rest in the Lord. And what things that God says, this is what we say. And so Paul did not come with very elegance of speech, but he came in the power of the Lord. He came wanting to do and to proclaim to the people about the testimony of God. And that's taken from verse uh, one. He said, when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with elegance of uh, wisdom or speech uh, as a, but I proclaim to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ. And so Paul was very plain in saying that it wasn't about him. It was all about the Lord. It was all about what Jesus was saying and had given him to say. And so when we looked at the question and it asked, uh, what is the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Well, knowledge is a learned um, uh, process. You, you gain knowledge through uh, teaching, going to school and so forth. And, and we're, we have a little bit of understanding, but mainly knowledge is, is a learned fact wisdom comes from the Lord, amen, and so we have no wisdom but of God, but what God gives us to say according to his word, so uh, wisdom is, inf knowledge is information, the fact or state of knowing or learn uh, information, and wisdom is learned from God, both words are uh, state learned facts, so uh, here it asks the question again in verse, uh, question number two, why is it important not to lean on your own understanding? And it was one of the lessons that we had that it said that we were not, um, we were insufficient. We were uh, illiterate, so to say, to the point that we were infallible. We did not know enough that we would, of our own understanding of our own words, to be able to say what God says. So he says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord. So our understanding is, is weak in that we need the Lord. We need the help of God. We need the, the, the guidance of the Lord to, to give us what to say. And, and at times and when we're speaking to people, we want to say one thing, but the spirit of the Lord will give us understanding when to say and what to say. So we are careful in our conversation and our deliverance of of, of, of the scriptures to people, when we're testifying to people, we, we have to not give them our opinion. It's not what God is saying to go with. He said, go with my words. He said, open, my, open your mouth and I will fill it. And question number three, it says, uh, why can we depend on the power of God? Because he's almighty, he's all God. And so he he's all wisdom and he's all knowledge. And so what's the thing that we need we come, we get it from the Lord. God gives us and equips us in every area of our lives. So whatever thing that we need, whatever thing that 
we we have to 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 know when we go god said he will give it to us so we don't go with uh elegance of speech we go in the power and in the name of the lord we go understanding that it is the lord that has made us and not we ourselves we go in the understanding i can do nothing except the lord except the lord speaks and speaks through me and to say what he says to say so it's important not to uh trust your own knowledge because your knowledge is limited our understanding is limited and so when we when we study the word of god uh second timothy amen it tells us to study that self-approval a workman under god needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and even in that we have to wait on the lord he imparts to us wisdom he imparts to us knowledge and so we understand that whatever thing that god gives us he's building us up so that when we do go out we're speaking based on what the spirit of the lord has given us and what things we have seen and what things god has allowed us to hear by the spirit it's all by the spirit and the working of god that when we speak we speak from the power and by the power of god so that we not error that we're not lead people in the wrong way so it's important because these the souls out here are very um, fragile, fragile. And so we have to be mindful when we talk to people, what we're saying to people, because, you know, it's, it's, you know, you can lead people the wrong way. We can hurt people. So we have to be careful to understand what the spirit of the Lord is saying. So going back to that verse, so that your faith will not rest on the wisdom and that word that I cannot say of men. Uh, put not your trust in man because they, they will deceive you. They will lie to you. So you're yeah, laughing at me over here. But it's, it's important to understand that we, we cannot trust man. We have to trust God. And anything and everything that we say, it must line up with the word of God. Uh, line upon line, precept upon precept, their little, your little. It all comes together. You can go to the old and you can go to the new and you bring it right back and it tells the story. So it's important that we line up in the word, that we're we're led by the spirit of God, that, that when we speak, we speak from understanding when we read and study the word of God. So it's important that we know what we're talking about when we talk. And when we don't know, we ask God to help us because he is our help. He is our, he's our teacher. He's our God. He, he's one that will give us information. It will give us knowledge and gives us words of wisdom in time when it needs to be departed or imparted, excuse me, to whomever God said to do. And so, Lord, I thank you for that, what you've given me tonight, that I might be able to say what you say and not be in error. But God, that you will bless, heal and deliver. So it is in Jesus name I pray and I say amen. Well, I got five more minutes, Bishop. You, you owe me five more minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> Lord, ain't, ain't, that a, ain't that a mess? Five more minutes. Y'all got any questions y'all want to ask about the lesson? I just want to say, I thought, that, I thought that that was good to know. We already know the scripture says, lead not to our own understanding, but to break down the difference between knowledge and wisdom and where it comes from. And just to understand that we don't know everything. So we have to depend on God to help us in those times, because if we don't, we can mess somebody up. Amen. Verse seven says this is the Kendra. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God uh, destined for our glory before time began. So God has, as Overseer often says, we were already prepared before we got here. We were already gifted before we got here. And the word of wisdom was already imparted to us before we got here. So what faith does, faith brings us to the point whereby then that wisdom and knowledge becomes operationable. But until you come to that place in time that God can use you for that particular time and event, then we have to be mindful of what we say, because then we're stepping out and stepping out of the will of God to say other than what he says to say.
You got three more. You got three more minutes. <laughs> you, got, you got three more. <laughs> Talk on, mm. talk on. What else you got Let's to say go. tonight? Let's go. To go back up, it says, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature. So it doesn't matter. It's not an age issue. The maturity in the spirit realm brings you that you can speak before governors. You can, you can speak before priests. Amen. When the wisdom of God speaks through you, by importation, age don't matter. Amen. Age does not matter. It says, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. So it does not matter. I don't care what college you go to. I don't care what school you went to. But when the spirit and of God speaks and uses you, it exceeds above what man knows of himself. It is by the spirit of God that he speaks and revelation is revealed. Knowledge is revealed. So he said, take no thought, open your mouth. He said, now feel it. Amen. And so I don't care how young you are, when you're walking in the spirit and in the anointing of God, God's wisdom will speak forth out of your mouth and you would declare and decree a thing and it shall come to pass. Amen. 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 Come, we give God glory. Bless the name of the Lord. She's looking over at the clock herself. <laughs> oh, if that was somebody else teaching, she'd be like, I got one more minute. I need a little bit more. But listen, bless you, Bishop. It was awesome. I love y'all. Go be blessed. Likewise. Bye-bye.